It seems like most of the internet only cares about these type of gaming PCs. So here I am in today's video delivering yet another one. This here is a $1,250 pure performance, absolutely zero aesthetics build guide utilizing all brand new parts that you can pick up any day of the week from places like Amazon and Newegg. And yes, I do see the one problem with this build, it's kind of like the elephant in the room right now, but just calm your keyboard warrior fingers down now, we're going to fix it here soon. And speaking of keyboards, today's video sponsor is Corsair and specifically their new K65 Plus Wireless, which I've been been daily driving for about two months now. Despite the name, this is a 75% size board with a super clean and minimal aesthetic and of course a ton of customization options with Corsair's IQ software. I'm a huge fan of the multiple wireless connection options as I can use the USB dongle for my main PC and easily swap over to Bluetooth for my streaming PC. This dial that you can customize to do whatever you want is also very satisfying, but underneath the hood is pretty impressive as well. There's two layers of sound dampening which eliminates that clacky and pinging sound and that pair is great with these hot swappable pre-lubed MLX red linear switches. I've been loving this board and will continue to use it past this sponsorship and the link to get one for yourself or just check it out is down in the description. All right, so usually we have some sort of disclaimer about how we did spend some money on aesthetics or maybe we did some weird choices due to a sponsor, but none of that is going on with this build. I literally do not know any way to get more FPS for the money or FPS per dollar with this build. As far as I know, this is actually as good as it gets. We're of course gonna benchmark it and figure out the exact FPS numbers later on in the video, but just know everything's getting tested in 1440p Ultra with this kind of setup. Starting with the CPU, we're going with the Ryzen 5 7600X, and honestly, there's no other CPU i consider for this price range right now. We already know that Intel CPUs are struggling with some instability issues right now, and when you combine that with the lack of upgradability options until 15th gen comes out, I definitely think that Ryzen 7000 series is the play right now. Now sure, you could go with a slightly cheaper 7600 non-X version, but for like 10 bucks more, we're getting a way higher base clock, a potentially higher max boost clock, and it only comes at the extra cost of a little bit of power. Now yes, I know the internet likes to make a big deal when your PC uses a tiny little bit of extra wattage, but I don't think there's many people out there that are actually checking their electricity bill and seeing how much it increases from your gaming PC. For $209, this is as good as it gets right now, and this won't bottleneck even the highest event graphics. Cards. To cool it, we'll use the ID Cooling Frozen A410, and for $27, this is pretty solid. During gaming, our temperatures were peaking around 80 degrees, which is honestly great for this budget of a cooler, and not only does it perform well for the price, it also looks nice and minimal, which is a big bonus. I know we're not focused on aesthetics for these pure performance build guides, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't at least in the back of my mind a little bit. Wish I knew how to quit you. Over the past few months, we've put together four of these builds, and even though the components are just all black, we're still at least maintaining some level of minimal and clean designs here. We're not spending more money for aesthetics, but I have been avoiding using super like off gray color GPUs like the Gigabyte Eagle cards and things like that. It's disgusting. What is that? What am I looking at? So next up we have the motherboard and this is the MSI Pro B650M-A Wi-Fi and this is a pretty great unit for the price, which of course is just kind of the theme of every part that we're using today. I've always liked the aesthetics of the MSI Pro motherboards, but that's obviously not the priority. Instead, we're getting beefy enough heat sinks for the VRMs, two M.2 ports for expansion in the future, built-in Wi-Fi, and it's a nice balance of not going with the cheapest model possible, but also not wasting money on a super high-end motherboard. For pure performance builds, especially at this price range, we don't want to waste too much of our budget on the motherboard because we'd rather save that money for the more performance components like the CPU and GPU, so this one strikes a good balance for this type of build. Plugging into it is the RAM, and this is another G-Skill Ripjaws S5 32GB D DDR5 kit, and this one's actually clocked at 6400 megahertz. We're not gonna see any crazy FPS gains going from our typical choice of 6000 megahertz, but I figure now would be a good type of build to spend the extra few bucks and get a little faster. We're of course always looking for the kits that have a CL rating of 30, 32, or maybe 34, and this kit is specifically at 32. This S5 kit has remained pretty consistently priced at just over $100, which isn't too bad for what you're getting. And finally, the last thing plugged into the motherboard is the SSD, and this is a silicone power UD 
which is a Gen 4 drive with speeds of 3600 over 2800. Honestly, this isn't one of the faster drives and it's only rated as an entry level NVMe on the SSD tier list. Remember, you can get to this by going to zttbuildhelp.com and clicking SSD tier list here. But just like the motherboard, we don't wanna waste any money here. In terms of loading games and running your Windows operating system, this drive is still blazing fast, but compared to the competition, if you were also doing something that heavily relied on SSD speeds like video editing, I'd probably opt for a faster one. It's perfect for a pure performance gaming PC though. Moving on, we get to the power supply prep. And as you can see during the Twitch live stream of me building this PC every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, by the way, this went really quickly because we're not using any cable extensions. This is the MSI Mag A750 GL, which is an ATX 3.0 and PCIe 5 rated unit. And for $85, this is great. Any PSU that comes out these days that has that ATX 3.0 tag pretty much guarantees that it'll be at least tier B rated on the PSU tier list, even if it didn't make it to the tier list yet. So that's why I've been picking this one up lately. It's also fully modular, which means cable management will be much easier in our case. And speaking of which, we have absolutely never shown this one on the channel before. It's the Game Max Vista MB Black, which costs $54 on Newegg, and it's actually pretty solid. Remember that for a pure performance build, you can of course go all the way down to like a deep cool matrix 40, which is even cheaper, throw two extra fans in there and you'd be all set. The only reason I'm not doing that is because I've already shown that case way too many times this year. And because I figured that a $1,250 build deserves just a tiny, tiny boost in aesthetics. Flashback. Pure performance, absolutely zero aesthetics build guide. End of flashback. I actually really like this setup because it's still a fish tank design. So it actually looks like it was built in 2024, but it's still just a super cheap, very minimal setup that's great for pure performance build guides. The only problem though, is that for $53, it doesn't come with any fans. So I ended up scooping this five pack of black up here fans for $16 on Amazon, and that would bring our total cost for the case and fans combo up to $70. Now that's still not crazy expensive or anything, but just know you could go cheaper if you wanted to. Cases like the Sama ARGB Q5 or the DIY PC Q3 would actually provide a better price to performance setup. But like I said, I wanted to mix things up for this video. And honestly, I just didn't want any RGBs in this build. Correct me if I'm wrong, but all black non RGB, but still fish tank PCs aren't that common in PC building right now. So I think this is still actually a pretty unique design. I honestly love it because typically the people that aren't into aesthetics and just want performance don't go with a fish tank case. So we're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. Both, both, both. both. Both is good. And speaking of those pure performance snobs, the one thing that almost all of them do agree on is that this graphics card is some of the best value on the market right now. This here is the XFX RX 7900 GRE, and it was only a matter of time before I finally featured one in a build guide. It did actually already make an appearance in our recent Fortnite with AMD GPUs video, but this is the first time I'm using it properly in a build. The 7900 GRE released earlier this year, and it's been proven by so many other creators that it has some of the best possible value on the GPU market. For performance, it sits right in between the 7800 XT and 7900 XT, but it's actually only a tiny bit more expensive than the 7800 XT above that $500 mark. This is an unbelievable 1440p performer, which we're about to see in the upcoming benchmarking section. Before that though, here's what the entire parts list is looking like. And as you can see, this is extremely close to our $1,250 target mark. There is actually a bit of room to go under that mark as well. If you went with a slightly cheaper motherboard, maybe found a deal on the 7900 GRE, or of course, if you got a CPU and motherboard combo deal from Micro Center. But now before getting into those benchmarks, I do want to address that elephant in the room right now, and that is definitely the GPU sag. We've shown several B-roll clips of the GPU not exactly looking parallel to the desk, and I'm sure a bunch of you have already whipped out your micrometers to confirm this. I'm actually talking about it a little bit more in this video because I wanted to try and test various GPU sagging solutions, and I want to share my results in this video. The first thing we did was actually suggest by Mark, who's a Discord and Twitch mod in the ZTT community, and he said that we should try the trick that Jay's Two Cents made a video on a couple of years ago. I actually somehow completely missed this, but basically he explains that you can shove a screw in behind the case where the GPU bracket sticks out in the back, and this will eliminate the movement caused by this bracket. Whenever you move the GPU up and down from the front, you can see in the back of the case that this bracket is moving, so in theory, if you lock that bracket into place, the GPU won't be able to move. That didn't exactly work for us though, because even though 
I did successfully get a screw lodged in there. My GPU sag didn't improve at all, and that's not necessarily because the trick doesn't work, it's just because it didn't work with this specific graphics card. With the screw in here, the bracket on the card is actually firmly in place, which is an improvement, but the plastic shroud attached to the PCB of the GPU still has some flex, so it still ends up sagging. I'll definitely be trying that trick in the future because I now know for a fact that it will work with some GPUs, just not the one that we're using today. So the second thing I wanted to try was find the most reliable, cheapest, and cleanest looking support on Amazon that I could easily buy in the future for other builds. I know there's all sorts of fancy ARGB ones and how you can use Legos or build whatever you want, but I just wanted a long-term solution of something that I could always rely on. I first settled on this little guy from Avalis, which only costs $6 on Amazon. It looks amazing as it's all black and super clean, has a magnetic base, so it'll just snap right on top of the PSU basement and you can unscrew it to adjust the height. The problem is that with a micro ATX case, there's very little gap underneath the GPU, so this thing is way too big. I know, that's definitely not what she ever said before. A little, a little. But thankfully, I did find a smaller version of a similar design from Averzella, which was slightly more expensive. This has the same concept of a magnetic base and the unscrewing adjustment, and this one ended up being perfect for our build. I'll definitely be using both of these GPU supports in the future, and we'll be keeping some of these on hand so we always have them. We actually do buy things from Averzella already and keep them on hand, such as PWM fan extension cables and PWM hubs. They've been rock solid so far. So with all that being said, here you go. Here's what a perfectly level, at least according to Brian, GPU looks like. So now we can finally relax and move on to the benchmarks. We first started with 3D Marks Time Spy and this $1,257 gaming PC, well, that's the price before the GPU support bracket, cranked out a score of 18,788. That's a multiplier of 15, which is right where we're looking for a pure performance build guide. So we're right on the money with that. Next up was Helldivers 2. And when using 1440p with ultra settings, we got above the 100 FPS mark, which is pretty great to see. After after that was Cyberpunk, and we actually got literally the same 101 FPS average using, again, 1440p and ultra settings. Here's Starfield, where we couldn't quite get above 100, but we were still pretty close at 91 FPS using 1440p and ultra. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and just like I said in the intro, we can absolutely play every single title in 1440p ultra with the Ryzen 5 7600X and RX 7900 GRE. We, of course, tuned down the competitive titles because nobody plays those in ultra, but for $1,250, we're getting a fully capable, 1440p system that deserves at a minimum a 1440p and 165 hertz monitor to go along with it. And speaking of which, we do have a budget 1440p full setup guide video, including a never before seen build before coming up soon. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that one. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this pure performance build guide. Let me know down in the comment section if you would change any specific part about this build. And if you don't want to spend this much money on a custom gaming PC, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.